Sucrose is good. More Sucrose constellations is always good. I think he's dead. Thank you for the follow. Here. Right, here's a five star. Uh, I got. You got a Keijing! Keijing. <laughs> and so I won't get the pity one anymore because I got that one, right? Hmm? Oh, hey, look. If I. Are you fucking uh, I got a sword. You've got an Aquila Favonia and a Keijing. I don't know what that is. Hey everyone, it's Jinx here, and I guess I'm a Genshin math guy now. Now, as you can clearly see from the opening clip, uh, Tuna Streamer luck continues to be a thing. Because in case you also missed that from the last video, he also got a Constellation 1 clean in a single free ball. But yeah, he does stream almost every single day on Twitch. I do also hang out with him in my off hours, giving him advice, answering questions for him and chat, so be sure to come check it out. He is still new to Genshin Impact, meaning that he has a lot of questions, which you can also learn from as well, so be sure to go shoot him a follow to know when he's online. Alright, intro over. Let's talk about what's going on in this video, as this is the next video in the Genshin Impact Masterclass series. So, in today's video, we are going to be covering a relatively short but extremely important fundamental to understand, which is how does energy work in the game, and how can you abuse this to spam your ults? Now, obviously, building energy recharge on your character's build does increase their ult uptime. However, there are things you can change about how you build your team comps and how you play mechanically that can give you over three times as many ults. And no, that's not an exaggeration. You could actually get over three times as much ult uptime. And also, this is the perfect example of cheap deeps, because guess what? This doesn't cost you any resources. You'll be getting damage returns on your team just by playing better. As always, timestamps are on screen as well as in the description, and YouTube also will segment this into the timestamp chapters if you want to skip ahead to any particular parts. Okay, so first off, we need to discuss the basics and fundamentals of how energy mechanics work in this game, as well as explain the numbers behind it. So as I am sure you already know, anytime you hit an enemy with an elemental skill in this game, you do get some elemental particles that generate and eventually get absorbed by your character. The only exception to this, as far as I know, is no well, who cannot generate her own elemental skill particles. This is why Noel carry teams I call Noel battery comps, because the rest of the team's job is to generate Noel's energy for her so that she can ult more often, as well as buffer while she's in her ult. Now, some enemies like elites do actually drop a thing called an elemental orb, which gives you much more ult recharge when they die, but these are not automatically sucked into your character, you do have to go actively pick them up. We are going to mostly avoid talking about these elemental orbs because they aren't really a consistent way of generating energy. It's just nice to know what these things on screen are. Now, every elemental skill does have a set amount of elemental particles of the element type of that attack every time you use it and hit something with it. Certain attacks like Beidou's counter do get more elemental particles if you use the higher charge damage versions of the move by blocking attacks with a parry, for example. However, sometimes when you use an elemental skill, you do get an extra elemental particle. Well, why is this? This is because most enemies have certain HP thresholds that make them drop elemental particles. It's generally at 50% and 0%, but it varies from enemy to enemy. This is also why when you are murdering things that are lower level than you, you seem to generate your ults very quickly. However, when you start fighting Abyss or AR-40 domain enemies that are very tanky, you're suddenly lacking on your ult uptimes. This is because you are lacking these HP threshold elemental particles. And then the only other universal mechanic for getting energy back is that every four or so auto attacks, you do get one energy for your character. This is mostly really only useful to know if you are just barely short of getting your ult and you want to get it up more quickly. Then, of course, there are things like Exile's Force Set or Barbara Constellations that do generate energy otherwise, but they aren't really universal mechanics. These are just more set bonus or character specific mechanics. Okay, cool. So now that we understand exactly how we get these elemental particles, how much do they actually give us? Well, fortunately, this has already been tested and calculated by people far more patient than I. The chart you see on screen was created by Robin and is part of his Genshin Impact Team Building Resources 2.0 spreadsheet. This spreadsheet was the first resource I ever read on Genshin Impact when I was trying to learn more about it when I started getting into the game. It is a fantastic resource for just learning the basic mechanics of the game and I highly recommend you go check it out, link in the description to the spreadsheet. 
both myself as well as all of the theory crafters over at the RK Ching Mains Discord server, also link in the description to them if you want to go check that out, have yet to find any inconsistencies or inaccuracies in the spreadsheet, so it's a very good resource to look over. The spreadsheet's also the reason why I started looking into Bennett and discovered he's kind of the best four star in the game. So, if we take a look at this chart, we can see exactly how much energy we get for each elemental particle under what conditions. There are pretty much only two different conditions that can change in terms of how much energy we get. First off is, does the elemental particle match our element on the character? Because as you can clearly see, when the element does match with the character, we get three times as much alt charge. This is the reason why running double elements in your team is so powerful. Yes, you get elemental resonances, and resonances are neat. They're little bonuses, they get a little bit of extra damage or energy charge or whatever. You know, running double fire gets you 25% more base attack, it's additive with your other base attack, so it's around like a 10-15% DPS increase on most endgame builds, that's pretty neat. But the real reason why Klee or Deluke mixed with a Bennett in the team is so powerful is because this 3 times energy regen from other teammates of the same element lets you basically spam their ults off cooldown. Now, the next factor that goes into how much energy you get from elemental particles is whether the character is on the field when the particles get picked up or not. This is the mechanical part I mentioned earlier. Because the character who is on field when these elemental particles get picked up gets 67% more ult charge than the rest of your team. And no, they do not have to be the one who made the particles, they just have to be the one who picks them up. This is massive and probably the number one mechanical mistake I see amongst every player, streamer, content creator, etc. that I see is that they don't understand this fundamental. If your supports are trying to build up their ults because you use their ults for your team comp synergies, after they pop their elemental skill, do not switch off the character until they absorb the particles they just created. This is why if you ever see me play someone like Jing Chu as a sub carry or as a reaction support for a team, I will always wait until he absorbs all of his water particles before switching off of him if I have to build up my ults. This pretty much holds true for any support or sub carry in a game who does not currently have their ult unless you don't care about their ult that much, like on Fischl, for example. Generally speaking, the only time you switch off immediately off of a character is if they're a turret character like Fischl or Mona or Xiangling supports. Or of course in a Noel battery comp like on screen because you're specifically trying to funnel the energy into Noel's ultimates. Now you can refer to the chart on screen to see exactly how much energy you do get from these different two conditions. So let's say that Bennett pops his E, he gets two elemental particles, each of these will give him three energy each because he is also pyro type if he's on field. And then any pyro teammates like a Dei Luke or Zhang Ling who are not currently on field will instead get 1.8 per particle. And then if you also have let's say official and a sucrose in your team, both of them while off field will be getting 0.6 energy from each of these particles because they are different elemental types. And then any energy regen in your character's build will simply multiply this number. So say our Bennett has 200% energy recharge, they will just be getting 6 per elemental particle instead of 3. And as a last thing to cover on these clear particles on the chart, these are what drop when non-elemental enemies reach certain HP thresholds, like when you either half health or kill a hilly churl. Okay, cool, so that's the basics, numbers are pretty simple, at the end of the day the important part is you understand the mechanics that the on-field character gets more energy and so do teammates of the same energy type. Okay, now that we understand all of these basics and fundamentals, let's discuss a few little micro tricks and team building tricks that can help you optimize this to spam your ults off cooldown. So first off, I already said it earlier, but I have to repeat it because it's very fundamental. If you do want to generate ult on a character, do not leave field until they pick up the orbs they generate with their elemental skill. Of course, there are exceptions to this, like any turret characters, some of the effect over time characters like Barbara or Chi Chi also aren't very good for this. But as a general rule, when your support wants to build their ult up, you don't leave field with them until they pick up the particles they just generated. You can also just fill the time with auto attacks if you're in a safe position to try to get that one extra energy from the four or so autos. And then of course, if you want to generate your carry's ult more quickly, you should be switching to the carry after your energy generation supports pop their their abilities so that you can pick up the particles and get more ult charge. Now this is mostly useful in a Noel battery comp.
comp, but still applies universally if you want to get your carries alt up and it's not currently. You can also apply this same technique to generating your healer's ultimate if you need that burst heal and you're just barely short of getting it. Again, just whoever you want to have the ult up, they should be picking up the particles. Skillful management of who is on field when particles are picked up is one of the big differences between very skillful Abyss Floor 12 clearers and then just the general population of this game. It is, in my opinion, the most important fundamental micro you need to learn in this game if you want to start optimizing your play. Now, for a more advanced thing, let's talk about how EQ cancels work and why they're generally more ideal than QE cancels. And for those of you who don't play on PC, E is the button you use for your elemental skill and Q is the button you use for your alt. Now, on some characters, doing EQ is actually going to save you overall frames compared to QE. Like on Venti, for example, his E beautifully animation cancels into his Q. But at the end of the day, most of the characters in the game have roughly the same animation time for EQ versus QE. And yet, if your character's ult is up and you want to pop their ult, it is almost always the better option to do an EQ, not a QE. This is because elemental particles have travel time. So this means if you pop your E and an animation cancel into your ult, the particles will not hit you until the ult is already started and you get the full energy towards your next ult. This means regardless of whether we do an EQ or a QE, all of the energy is still going towards our next alt. However, doing EQ instead of QE allows us to overlap the travel time with our alt animation. In other words, because we do E first, the time the particles take to travel into your character is used up by the animation time for your ultimate. In general, this saves you so much time compared to doing it the opposite way. Doing a Q then an E means you now also have to wait for the particles to be absorbed by your support before you can switch off of them. This means you are losing up to 2 seconds of DPS and timers on debuffs and abilities every time you pop an ult on the support because you did it the wrong way. Again, this is not a 100% rule, there are exceptions. For example, you basically never want to pop Mona's ult and her E at the same time because it risks you accidentally burning the timer on her ult too early. And then otherwise, the main thing you want to keep in mind is that you should be ideally popping all of your support abilities off cooldown just to generate more elemental particles so your team has more ults in general. If you ever watch any Abyss 12 clears with like sub AR40 accounts that make use of very skillful mechanics and micro versus just having powerful teams to melt abyss floors, you will see that they are constantly microing who they're switching to, who is picking up the orbs, which ult I need to have up next, etc, etc, etc. This is also why the very selfish carries in the game like Klee and Razor who lose their ult if they switch off tend to synergize better with high cooldown supports. Now some of the low cooldown supports still synergize nicely with them, for example Kaya is still the best sub carry in general for Razor at the moment because he has the highest cryo uptime giving you the most superconductor. And Kaya in this particular example is kind of an exception where you don't want to always be popping his E off cooldown if it means you have to switch off of Razor during his ult, Razor's ult's more important. At the end of the day, the point of this video is to hand you these basics and fundamentals and some tips so that you can apply these to your own play and figure out how to best optimize your own particular team's playstyle to maximize your ult usage. Speaking of your team, let's talk about how we abuse these mechanics to make our teams just in general generate more ult charge. So first off, if your characters have a very important ultimate for your team, like your carry's ultimate for example, generally having at least one other person of the same elemental type in your team is useful because they generate 3 times more energy for your carry. Again, this is why Klee or Deluke as a fire carry with a Bennett support as healer and damage buffing is so powerful because they basically get to spam their ults off cooldown if you play correctly. Also on screen, you can see that my team is running a Chongyun and Chi Chi because Chongyun does help keep the uptime on Chi Chi's ult a little bit higher. Also, this floor is just like all fire resistant, so I'd rather be running a non fire comp. This is also why mono element teams can be very powerful even though they don't get to abuse reactions. If you have a pyro carry like Deluke or Klee and you choose to use a Zhang Ling as a support instead of, say, like a Fischl or Beidou for an overload team, yes you miss out on the overload damage, but that means you also get more ults on all of your characters because you're generating so much pyro energy with everyone's abilities. On top of that, any party-wide bonuses to a 
damage type, so like a Petra buff, a Venera debuff, or also Xiangling's Constellation 6 ability, or a C2 Guaba Fire Resistant Shred. These just apply to a larger percentage of your total team's damage when everyone's the same damage type. Now, please don't misunderstand and think I'm saying that, yes, Mono Element is so much better than Reaction Teams, because that's not true, this is just why they're competitive with each other. Both are good for different reasons, and both can be cheap for different reasons, so they both work. But this is also why, if you're running like a Razor Superconductor team, it's often good to have both Kaya and Chi Chi in your team if possible, just so Chi Chi's ult has more uptime, so Razor can be immortal more often. Yeah, having the double cryo resonance is neat, there's a little extra crit chance and stuff, but at the end of the day, the reason why Chi Chi Kaya Reza is so strong is because Chi Chi gets to spam more ults. Even if your Kaya is level 1, he still generates that extra energy for your Chi Chi support. Also, Chi Chi as the only source of cryo for Superconductor is kinda bad because her duration is only 15 seconds and her cooldown is 30 seconds and even with Sacrificial Sword, you still can't have 100% uptime on Superconductor, so Double Ice is nice. Just please don't run Chong Yun with Razor, you will dumpster his damage by converting him from physical to cryo damage. Alright, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in the video. If I did my job correctly, you should now have a strong understanding of the fundamentals of how energy works in this game, and also know a few ways to abuse this to get more damage without spending any extra resources. More ults means more damage. Cheap deeps! If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, comment below, as well as share it with your friends. All of these things just kind of push it up in the search algorithm so more people can see the Masterclass series. And as always, be sure to check out our Discord server if you have any particular questions. I try to spend a little bit of time every single day responding to pings in there. And even when I cannot respond to a particular DM or ping, we have a fantastic community of people there who are all learning together, sharing what they know, so it's just a great place to come hang out and learn more about Genshin. And of course, a massive thank you to Robin, who did build the Genshin Impact Team Building Resources 2.0 spreadsheet that taught me so much about the game when I started out. The energy information in this video did come from that spreadsheet, so be sure to check the description if you want to see the full spreadsheet link. Now, I am trying to get these videos out as fast as I recently can, but I've got a list of like 20 different Masterclass subjects and other videos to talk about, so if you want the most up-to-date information from me, be sure to follow me on Twitter where I just post the things I'm working on. The Jinx Mathlos one is my personal Twitter, the other one is our company account for the channel if you want any of the general channel updates. And of course, a huge, huge thank you as always to our patrons. Next video is going to be the first video of next month, so I will be doing a full patron callout in that video. Thank you so much again for your continued support. Y'all the best. All right, that's all I have for this video. Again, if you want to see any of the new Masterclass videos, you want to see when I go on stream, I'm probably going to do one this weekend. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way YouTube tells you when any of those things happen. Happy waifu hunting, whalers. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.